Man lies in an ancient mechanical coffin, turning the key and winding the clock. As the machinery runs at high speed, there's a flurry of sparks and lightning. The soul appears outside in a flash. The owner of the supermarket is closing the store. A man's soul floats in easily. The owner comes to the counter, turns on the cash register, and counts the money. It's obvious that he's made a lot of money today. The man followed him to the innermost room. Watched the boss open the safe. He put the money in his hand and wrote down all the codes. When the boss left, he set the security alarm. Then he closed the bars and locked the combination lock. He made sure that everything was safe. The man woke up instantly from his coffin. He sat up at once. He changed his clothes and headed straight to the supermarket. He enters the code like it's no big deal. He opened the vault. He took everything inside, plus a revolver. Then he fled the scene in a hurry. At the same time Tom, who was not broken in body but in mind, came back and watched the man go out the door. Curiosity got the better of him, and he took the opportunity to lie down in the coffin. He didn't realize that his soul had gone straight to the man's girlfriend, Mary's house. As the saying goes, friend's wife can be deceived. It seems Tom had been lusting after Mary for some time. Then he sneaked in through the room. He looked at the picture of the two of them together, and felt hatred. Mary was sleeping in her pajamas. He turned around and came to Mary's side. His heart was pounding at the sight of her beautiful face. Then he laid down next to Mary, just as he was about to go further. Mary felt something and suddenly opened her eyes. We found an amazing coffin. Not only did it have a sunroof and leather upholstery, and while he was clearing out the debris, he suddenly realized there was a compartment underneath. When he lifted the center panel and found that underneath was a hidden secret, a beautiful set of instruments. We called his friend Tom, who was disabled, to work on it. Mike picked up a key next to the equipment and discovered that it was an antique from over 2,000 years ago. And then he found the eye. So, he inserted the key and he slowly turned it a few times. And the whole thing started to move really fast and a strange music started to play. The two of them were instantly confused. Isn't this just a music box? However, once the music ended, nothing strange happened. The next day, Mike found out from his friend Martin, who works at the library, there was a record of this, that the coffin could separate the body from the soul. Mike couldn't help but hear about it. When he got home, he grabbed Tom and decided to do an experiment. He put the goldfish in the coffin. As the key was turned, the music started again, and some strange electric current hit the goldfish directly. In no time at all, the goldfish was dead. While the two of them were still in a daze, but a strange scene happened. Following the beat of the music, the goldfish came back to life. Mike decided to feel it for himself, but to be on the safe side, he called his best friend Martin to witness it and asked Tom to videotape the whole experiment. After all the preparations, Martin turned the key. As the device was activated, and the music began to play, as the electricity passed through Mike's eyeballs, he suddenly lost all vital signs. Martin panicked and shook Mike. There was no pulse. What they didn't realize was, Mike was really out of his body. He was standing right next to them. Even he couldn't believe it. And just as the music suddenly stopped, Mike woke up. He was stunned. So Mike told the two of them how amazing it felt. At this strange sight, they were both interested. They both wanted to experience an out-of-body experience. So Martin went into the devil. After his friend turned the key, the gears began to turn, with the stimulation of electric current. The soul actually left the body, and went out of the house and wandered, aimlessly through the streets. Suddenly a speeding train passed through his body, and woke up with a start. It was a very uncomfortable experience for Martin, and he didn't like it. So, he advised them not to try it again. Tom was not happy. So despite Martin's advice, he went into the coffin, and with everything going on, Tom's soul left his body. Tom's soul left his body. He didn't think he'd be able to walk without being paralyzed. He couldn't have imagined it. And that's when Mike's girlfriend, Mary, came calling. Mike had charged his credit card on the slide. They had a fight. Mary was so sad that she left, and that hurt Tom, who had a crush on him. So, he followed her to the car, and just as he was about to touch Mary, the music stopped. Tom woke up. He was very excited, because he could stand up inside. He's usually so self-conscious, that he's willing to do anything. Martin, on the other hand, found the coffin very strange. So, he advised them not to move for a while, went back to the library for more information. Although Tom was very excited at this time, but he couldn't resist the persuasion of the two men. So, he pretended to follow their advice on Martin's way home. A demon suddenly appeared behind him, and at the same time, Mike saw the same thing, but he thought it was just a blur. And that's when Mary sent the video about breaking up with her, that made Mike feel bad about himself. And that's how it all started. And Martin made a new discovery. If nothing else, something was bound to happen. The little goldfish that was used as an experiment. This time it was really dead. It wasn't a sheet soul. In the coffin again, the spirit went to spy on Mary. But then Mike called. Tom rushed up to listen in on their conversation. Mike told Mary that he had paid off his credit cards. He hoped she'd forgive him. They were still together. What Tom didn't expect, that Mary would forgive him so easily, and it almost killed him. He was so angry that he threw down the cupboard, and that made him even more confused. He didn't realize his soul could touch food. Just as Tom's soul returned, Martin went home and studied the music, and soon found a hidden frequency. And it was the exact frequency that would cause people to hallucinate and ultimately death. Coincidentally, a fly landed on the screen. A fly landed right on the screen. He heard the sound and died instantly. The reason why the three of them have been fine. I think the frequency is not powerful enough. It seems to be in its growth phase. Then Martin had another flash of insight. He picked up the camera and pointed it at the back of his head. 
he found the eye of a needle. So, he was about to email Mike. And then a dark figure appeared out of nowhere. Martin was so scared. He ran for the door. But, he fell down the stairs. That night the FBI found Mike. He and the FBI went to the scene of the crime. That's because there was an incent. Email on the computer. It meant that the coffin was slowly eating away at the brain. Right now it's just hallucinations. Eventually their lives will be in danger. Mike had to destroy it. When he got home, he raised his axe to the coffin. But he was stopped by Tom. But what he didn't expect was to be stopped by Tom. He's been paralyzed for years. But he's standing behind him. 